Going live to hear from FBI so, Director Christopher Ray. Morning, everybody. Thanks for being here on such short notice. Uh, as you all know, of course, the Justice Department's Office of the Inspector General issued its report today about DOJ and FBI activity in the run-up to the 2016 election. Uh, let me say up front that I appreciate the Inspector General's work on this important review. I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about the report, and then I'm happy to take a few questions. The FBI's mission is to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution. But to carry out that mission, we're entrusted with a lot of authority. So our actions are subject to close oversight from the courts, from our elected leaders, and from independent entities like the Inspector General. And that's how it should be. That kind of examination, that kind of oversight, makes the FBI stronger as an organization and makes the public more safe. With that in mind, let me briefly address the findings in the Inspector General's report. I take this report very seriously, and we accept its findings and recommendations. It's also important, though, to note what the Inspector General did not find. This report did not find any evidence of political bias or improper considerations actually impacting the investigation under review. The report does identify errors of judgment, violations of or even disregard for policy, and decisions that, at the very least, with the benefit of hindsight, were not the best choices. We've already started taking the necessary steps to address those issues. First, we're going to hold employees accountable for any potential misconduct. We've already referred conduct highlighted in the report to our disciplinary arm, OPR, which is the FBI's independent Office of Professional Responsibility. We need to hold ourselves accountable for the choices we make and the work we do. We're doing that fairly but without delay in the way that people should expect. We're going to adhere to the appropriate disciplinary process and once that process is complete, we won't hesitate to hold people accountable for their actions. Second, we're going to make sure that every FBI employee understands the lessons of this report. Because change starts at the top, starts with me, we're going to require all of our senior executives from all around the world to convene for in-depth training specifically focused on learning the lessons that we should learn from this report. Then we're going to train every single FBI employee, both new hires and veterans alike, on what went wrong so these mistakes will never be repeated. Third, we're going to make sure that we have the policies, the procedures, and the training that are needed for everyone to understand and remember what is expected of all of us. That includes drilling home the importance of objectivity, of avoiding even the appearance of personal conflicts or political bias in our work, ensuring that recusals are handled correctly and effectively and communicated to all the right people, making all of our employees fully aware of our new policy on media contacts, which I issued last November, and making painfully clear that we will not tolerate noncompliance. Ensuring that we follow all DOJ policies on public statements about uncharged conduct or ongoing investigations. And ensuring that our employees adhere strictly to all policies and procedures about the use of FBI systems networks, and devices. I've also directed our associate deputy director to lead a review of how the FBI handles sensitive investigations and to make recommendations on how those should be staffed, structured, and supervised in the future so that every sensitive investigation is conducted to the FBI's highest standards. 
We're going to continue also to work with the department to gauge our progress in each of these areas. The OIG report makes clear that we've got some work to do. But let's also be clear on the scope of this report. It's focused on a specific set of events back in 2016 and a small number of FBI employees connected to those events. Nothing, nothing in this report impugns the integrity of our workforce as a whole or the FBI as an institution. As I said earlier, fair and independent scrutiny is welcome and appropriate accountability is crucial. We're going to learn from this report and we're going to be better and stronger as a result. But I also want to be crystal clear about the FBI that I get to see. In the past 10 months, I've been able to visit over 30 of our FBI field offices around the country and a whole bunch of our LEGAD offices overseas. I've visited with folks from every FBI division at headquarters and in office after office, meeting after meeting, I see extraordinary people doing extraordinary work. Again and again, I hear remarkable stories, frankly, inspiring stories about the work the men and women of the FBI are doing to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution. Just in the past several months, We've disrupted terrorist attacks in places ranging from the Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco to a crowded shopping mall in Miami. In March, we charged a ring of Iranian state-sponsored hackers with stealing terabytes of data from scores of American companies, universities, and government agencies. In Austin, we deplored more than 600 of our people to assist in the investigation of the package bombings down there. This year alone, we've rescued 1,305 kids from child predators, some of them as young as seven months old. We've arrested more than 4,600 gang members, violent gang members, in just the past several months. Our FBI lab has closed thousands of cases through fingerprint analysis and DNA analysis. And our hostage rescue team has deployed something like 27 different times on missions around the country. I could go on and on. The FBI's men and women are doing all that work with the unfailing fidelity to the Constitution and the laws that it demands, the bravery that it calls for, and the integrity that the American people rightly expect. As FBI director, I'm laser focused on ensuring that our folks get to continue that great work and do it with the fidelity and bravery and integrity that we've always had. As I've been saying since as far back as my confirmation hearing, I'm a huge believer in the importance of process, of doing this job by the book in every respect, and I expect all our employees to do the same. I've tried to emphasize that at every opportunity. In my view, the FBI's brand over the past 110 years is based less on all of our many, many successes than it is on the way in which we've earned those successes. Following our rules, following the law, following our guidelines, staying faithful to our core values and our best traditions, trying to make sure we're doing the right thing, but to doing it in the right way treating everybody with respect, and following the facts independently and objectively, no matter who likes it. That is the best way. That, in my view, is the only way to maintain trust and credibility with the people we serve. I appreciate this chance to respond to the IG's report, and I would also refer you for more detail in our written response that's attached at the end of the uh, Inspector General's report. And with that, I'm happy to take a few questions. Right, right. Yeah. In particular, that singled out in the report has been referred to OPR. Which, what are you referring to in particular? I can't comment on any specific personnel matter. I would just say that there are a number of instances in the report where there's conduct that's highlighted. We've had that referred to our, as I say, our disciplinary arm, our OPR. Uh, there's a process for that. Uh, it's a tough process. It's a rigorous process. 
and we expect that process to be followed. And once that process is complete, we won't hesitate to hold people accountable. Great. Great. Yeah. Just to follow on that, I know you can talk about the specific conduct, but here it does say that Director Comey, Lisa Page, and Peter Strzok all use personal email accounts, but only Peter Strzok is being uh, referred for an investigation to see if that's in violation of policies. Is that investigation ongoing, and are there any individuals besides Peter Strzok who are being investigated internally? Well, again, I'm not going to talk about any particular personnel matter because I don't think that would be appropriate. As I said at the beginning, I'm committed to doing the right thing in the right way and by the book. And by the book does not include talking about pending personnel matters with all of you, much as you might like for me to ask that. So, yeah. Thanks. Director Josh Gerson with Politico. Um, you said there's nothing in the report that impugns the integrity of the FBI's workforce as a whole, but the report does say that there is a culture of leaking uh, at the FBI. Do you disagree with that finding in the report, and what do you plan to do about it if, if you do agree with it? Well, as I said, we accept the findings uh, of the report and the recommendations. We've done a number of things on that regard. First, we issued a new media policy that's much stricter and much more clear than what had been in place before. Uh, second, we're gonna be doing intensive training uh, on exactly those issues, things like the one that you alluded to, that includes contacts with the media. Third, we're gonna make painfully clear to everybody that we won't tolerate noncompliance. Uh, and then last, I've asked uh, our OPR uh, to take a hard look at whether or not they think the penalties that exist right now are sufficient to deal with that kind of conduct. Right, yeah, sure. I want to talk a little about, um, maybe ask you about sort of the reputation of the FBI. Uh, certainly, uh, the FBI has taken a lot of hits from the president uh, in his tweets and, and what he's called, certain things he said about certain investigations. Members of Congress have certainly uh, hit at you guys. Uh, and now certainly this report, you know, takes some issues with the FBI. And a lot of what we've been hearing is that, you know, people are worried that the reputation of the FBI has suffered as a result of all the activity in the last several months. And I'm just wondering if you think that's the case, and if so, what you intend to do to try and fix some of the perception, perhaps, that the public may have of the FBI now. Well, that's a subject that's near and dear to me. I guess I would say a couple things. One is there's no shortage of opinions about us out there. Uh, I will tell you that the opinions that I care the most about are the opinions of the people who actually really know us and know us through our work. So I'm focused on what a juries think when our agents take the stand. I'm focused on what a judges think when we give them a search warrant. I'm focused on what victims and their families think when they are asked, who do you trust to get your child back? I'm focused on what do our state and local law enforcement partners think when they think, who do they trust? Who do prosecutors want to work with on cases? To me, it's the work that matters. So I look at things like that. I look at how our recruiting is doing. I look at how our retention is doing. Our recruiting, uh, we get about 12,000 plus people, for example, trying to be special agents every year. Our admission rate, our selection rate, 5%. That's better than the admission rate at Harvard, Yale, Princeton, or Stanford. And it's not a fluke. You know, we just recently hired a whole new crop of honors interns. So the young people coming out of college who have lots of choices about what they want to do with their careers. We had the highest number of applicants we've ever had for our honors intern program. You want to know what that admission rate was? 5%. So I look at things like that. I look at what people think when they know us. And I look at what people think when they express their views through their actions. I look at our attrition rate. Our attrition rate in the agent population in the FBI is 0.8%. So in my view, the views that matter, the opinions that matter, are the views of the people who know us through our work. And when I go around the country and around the world and I talk to our partners and I talk to the victims and I talk to the people who know us, our brand's doing just fine there. Thank you. When you read this report, if you could sum up your reaction and your, uh, from having read it in one word, what is that word and, and how would you describe your emotional reaction to it? Disappointed. Why, yes. Why disappointed? Have you ever used a personal email address for any FBI business? Not that I can think of. Uh, Chris Sherman, Bloomberg News. Uh, some people are going to um, 
use this report to criticize the Mueller investigation because strong work on both investigations. What assurances can you give that the Mueller investigation has integrity and credibility? And also, some people are already criticizing you for making mistakes by by sharing documents with Congress, investigative documents. And so, how do you respond to criticism that you might be making mistakes right now by by sharing investigative material with Congress? Well, I think on the on the first point, I'm not going to speak for the Office of Special Counsel. Uh, I would note that there are a number of things that we've done, uh, both in terms of referring people uh, to OPR, but also in terms of reassigning people to try to ensure that we're uh, bringing the right kind of integrity to staffing and all sensitive investigations. As to the congressional question, my view is we have an obligation to be responsive to legitimate congressional oversight. That's part of our job. As I said at the beginning, we are entrusted with enormous power. And so we should expect we're going to get tough questions and we need to be responsive and cooperate with that. But, but we also have an obligation to protect sources and methods and not to compromise ongoing criminal investigations and to adhere to things like grand jury secrecy and things like that. And so the challenge is how do we make sure we do both? We're committed to trying to do both. Uh, and I think we've struck the right balance so far. Are you sure yes, sir. Jeff Degas with CBS News, specifically about the president's criticism of the FBI. He has, over the last year or so, attacked the credibility of the FBI. Do you think this DOJ uh, IG report now validates his criticism? Well, again, I'm not going to comment on any other person's opinions. Uh, no matter where they're communicated. The uh, what I am going to do is talk about the opinions that I think matter. The opinions to me that matter are the opinions of the people that are relevant to our work day in, day out, all across this country. We have 37,000 FBI employees, agents, analysts, and staff, and scores of task force officers that work with them. And every day, every day, all around this country, and around the world, those people are having to make important decisions that protect lives. The opinions of the people that they have to engage with on that work, those are the opinions that matter to me. That's what I'm focused on. As far as the report goes, there's some sobering lessons in there, and we're going to learn those lessons, and we're going to act on those lessons, and that's the way the FBI has always handled these things in the past, and that's what made the FBI stronger over the last 110 years. Right. Yeah. Members of Congress are acting in good faith in their oversight efforts, given that you've created, that the FBI has disagreed with some of the characterizations of meetings and um, various things that have come out. I think Congress has a job to do, uh, and we have a job to do. And together, we're trying to work through the various issues that are presented by the tensions between congressional oversight and, as I said earlier, protection of sources, methods, tradecraft, ongoing investigations, and things like that. We're committed to trying to work through those things with Congress. Yes. Yes. I know you don't want to identify the people who are involved or have been referred to OPR, but can you tell us how many? Uh, have been referred to OPR as a result of this report? I can't. Uh, that's not a topic I can comment on. I really want to be careful. I, I know why you're asking the question, and I, I respect that. But it's really important to me to make sure that we don't compound the mistakes that are found in this report by deviating from our process. And so I think it's very important that we respect the appropriate process, that it be done right, as I said earlier, by the book, and once that process is complete, we will not hesitate to hold people accountable. Director, you said there are lessons in this report. What are the lessons? The lessons are the importance, number one, the importance of trying to make sure that we avoid even the appearance of bias in all of our work, that objectivity and the appearance of objectivity matters. There's lessons in there about uh, contacts with the media and appropriate engagement with all of you. Uh, there's lessons in there about the appropriate uses of devices. Uh, there's a number of things. And the IG has a number of, I think, nine recommendations at the end. And I think those are the lessons that we're trying to learn from this report. And we take it very seriously, and we accept the findings and the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you.